Okay, um, for, the, um, for the last session this afternoon, we've actually got four speakers, so it will be uh, in rapid succession. Um, the main idea on, on this presentation was um, the, the issue of affordability for textbooks. I mean, a, a lot of us know that, uh, that new textbooks cost a lot of money, and there are some that just say, I can't stand anymore and we find that things that change are not that material, um, you know, that the old edition was probably just as good. And the, but I think even more importantly, we're finding that it's so easy to do publishing now that you don't really need a traditional publisher that puts a book together. I mean, you can do them in HTML pages, you can almost do it yourself. So then the question comes in, well, why can't we do it ourselves? What are the options and, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? Uh, there's a lot of issues about open educational research materials. One of them is that how do you find them? Which ones are good? Have they been vetted? I mean, this is a, uh, an open question that uh, as teachers, we're going to have to solve that and figure out how to, um, how to do that. But we do have um, some examples here today that, we're going to, uh, that you're going to be able to take a look at and see what they've done and how they came to where they are. And to actually do this, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Senti, who's going to do the introductions and give a little bit of background for each one. Thanks, John. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Mark Senti. I'm the marketing director at WebAssign. Um, and I just wanted to briefly introduce each one of the um, authors or author teams as uh, they're about to begin their individual sessions. Um, each one of these author or author teams um, has a really unique and inspirational kind of story behind what they've done, why they've decided to write a book, and how they've gone about getting it out there uh, to the public. Uh, so without further ado, um, I wanted to introduce our first speaker, um, a woman who has many, many titles. Um, among them, uh, she's the chair of De Anza Community College out in California. She's also the president of the uh, CMC Cubed, uh, which is the, uh, the uh, community college math consortium um, in California. Uh, she's also the first project director for the Consortium of Community College Open Ed Resources, which just this week merged uh, with the Open, um, the Open Coursework Consortium. I can't read my own notes. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to introduce Barb Olowski, who's a statistician by trade, um, but is going to be talking to you about the book that uh, she and her co-author have written. Thanks, Mark. I, I don't usually... Um, correct people introducing me, but I just want to tell you I'm only the chair of the math department, not the whole college. Just so you, just so you know. But thanks. Maybe you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I also have two other distinctions at the moment. One is after hearing the morning, the speakers up till now. The, I'm not. This usually doesn't happen to me, but I'm now completely intimidated um, hearing how everybody because I realize that I actually am probably the realest the realist newbie in this group in that we just finished our, our first year with WebAssign and it seems like it's been decades already for how, how helpful and how much I know the whole WebAssign team. But I heard Lisa say, oh, I've only been doing this for three years and somebody only six years, we're still pretty new and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we're still just getting through this. So I thought, um, they asked me if I would discuss how it came to be this whole connection with me and WebAssign and having an open book and how that works and why I do an open book because you don't get paid if you have an open book and all that stuff. So I'm going to do it in my short 15 minutes. So um, that's a picture of me. That's my email address. And that is the URL for the textbook if you would like to use it at your college. It's statistics with the algebra-based prerequisite. So this is statistics for non-engineers. Um, which is generally considered the transferable course at colleges, community colleges, universities, and so on. Um, and I'm assuming these slides go somewhere after, right? That people will be able to, to get them? Okay, great. All right, so here's how it started. I had a for-profit textbook, Susan Dean and myself. We didn't start out, as most people who are textbook authors, um, we didn't start out writing a textbook. It was in the early 90s. We wanted to integrate technology. Texas Instruments had just developed this calculator called the TI-82, and then the 85, then the 83, then the 84. And there wasn't too much technology. And also, um, we, we had troubles. We went through a series of about eight or 10 textbooks 
because at De Anza, and, and maybe uh, your schools are like this or maybe not, we have a very, very high percent of English second language students. We have the highest Cambodian and Vietnamese population in San Jose area outside of Cambodia and Vietnam. And so, um, so like when we say we have a real Vietnam town, we really do, you know. So, and also we have a huge Chinatown in San Francisco is the highest Chinese population out of, um, outside of China as well. And, and then we also have a huge number of fourth and fifth generation Americans from Mexico who still don't have English as their first language. And so what we found was these textbooks, not only are we teaching the math course, that is the statistics course that everybody hates. It's a service course because they need it either to graduate from a four-year university as fulfilling their math requirement, or they need it because they are a social science major. A, um, a um, teaching teachers now need to have statistics or administration of justice or something, but they're not, or economics, so I guess those are semi-technical. But they're not the science majors, unless they're pre-med, but not hard science majors. So it's not chemistry, physics, math majors, computer science majors. It's everybody else who doesn't want to be in math. The students who say, statistics is the hardest course in the world. And all I keep thinking is, you haven't taken physics. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I don't know why they say statistics is hard. It's so easy. You just read and answer word problems. So anyways, we, had, we eventually wrote notes, and the students kept, we kept adding more and more. And the students finally said, you know, we're not buying a book. We're just using your notes. Turned into a book. We went the traditional route with um, a publisher. We had several offers. And one of the uh, large publishers took our book because it was considered, I don't know what this means, but reform statistics. They were just come out with the title of reform calculus. So this is reform statistics. It was a data analysis approach had a lot of multicultural um, applications and examples in it. They took the book. We had the contract. It came out. Somehow, maybe because I was just so naive, I was able to negotiate two things in the contract. One, that they would never raise the cost of the textbook above $80 with only a certain percent, I think it was a 3% increase per year allowed of the cost of the textbook. And um, the second was that we would in, the company would indemnify us as opposed to us indemnifying them. So if you have a, a, uh, an agreement with a textbook publisher and you read your contract, read your contract. It says that you will indemnify the company. And I thought, holy cow, I can't indemnify a huge big company. Their legal fees for one little tiny lawsuit would be more than my whole salary and my husband's and our house and everything else. So we, had, we did that. Then eventually that company, when it was still in the preliminary edition, they sold out to another um, textbook company who had our book. And then they were working. And then that textbook company bought another one. And suddenly we went from being the only statistics book for a college division to be one of a dozen to two dozen. And in a moment of weakness, the large company agreed to let Sue and me pay to purchase back our copyright. And this was in the mid-'90s. And so we purchased it, and we started self-publishing. And we were able, because you know, going from being with a publisher to self-publishing, you can print for 4 or $5. So we were able to order the textbook, store it under our ping pong table, um, <laughs> deliver it to places and ship it, and sell it to the bookstores for $38. They sold it for 50 and we put our kids through college. And that was a really good deal, right? That was a great deal. We were earning quite a bit of money on having a smaller audience and what the textbook publishers said is that we could have a larger audience. But we realized that you know, there comes a place where you're either going to get really, really rich or you're going to make enough money. And in between, it really didn't matter. We had enough money that we were putting the kids through school and we never envisioned ourselves getting really, really rich. So why should we kill ourselves having to go from conference to conference to conference to stand at all the booths? It's much more fun to, to do that. So we did that for many years. Then. Um, OER came in, and I worked. I work at De Anza College um, in California, and I had a, a very. She's still a very, very good friend, and I'm one of the. I feel lucky because I can actually say it without pretending to be a name dropper or anything. But I was really good friends with Martha Cantor, who was first my president, then my chancellor, and we had a board member, Hal Plotkin, who I actually knew before he became on our board, because he happened to have taught my daughter 
my younger daughter in Sunday school. And then I was there when he got engaged and all that stuff. So um, he was real, he ran on the platform for our board of trustees that when he went to college, he, went, he was the first board member who had gone to Foothill. We had a two college district. He could not afford his textbooks. He, he was raised by a single mom. The father had checked out and wasn't even helping. He dropped out of high school at age 15 because he had to help pay for food for his family. He would buy his textbook, return it on the return date, buy it again the next day, return it in the 10-day return date so he could get through Foothill. So he ran on this platform that he was going to lower the cost of textbooks long before OER. Well, the only one that a chancellor reports to is the Board of Trustees. So when your Board of Trustee member is harping down your back all the time, you pay attention. Hewlett Foundation is almost walking distance to, um, to Foothill College. We got involved. We met with um, Mike Smith, who had worked for President Clinton, was head heading Hewlett Foundation. They were funding MIT's open course where Rice University's connection, Carnegie Mellon's CL, well, it wasn't CLI then, but doing stuff. And then we got a grant. So what happened was we got this grant. And before we got the grant, Martha started the Community College Consortium for OER. And I became its first project director. And she asked me to increase the community college membership to 100 colleges around, well, it's international because we have one Canadian college, but <laughs> national. <laughs> so we got up to, we, I st just got it at about 30. We got it up to 100. Then Hewlett gave us a big grant. And they had, were also funding connections. And they gave this big grant for us to be the first community college with OER to get involved with Rice University and all these other things. So Sue and I had actually um, donated our lesson plans. We had won in the early 90s when online learning came out. We won a, an award for the top, I don't know what they want to call it, the California Virtual Campus Online Learning Distance Learning Course for the state of California. I think we won it because one, it had color, and two, it was the only course that was ADA compliant because we worked with the disability specialists. And um, three, it was finally something that wasn't in art or art history. So I think they figured it had to go to <laughs> math. And we were women, and so I, we won it. Anyways, <laughs> so we got that. And then I had made, because I was teaching on television, distance learning. That's how distance learning was. I sat in front of the, the um, TV cameras, and I would press camera one if I wanted them to look at the calculator. I'd press camera two if they wanted them to look here. I'd press camera three. And I had been doing this live for many years. So there were no retakes. And finally, one day, I just said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I said, we do it live. We do it on TV. And I said, can't we just make these? And people could buy for $3 the VHS tape and put it in um, their, compute, their television, uh, D, what is it called, VCR. Um, and they could watch it instead of me doing this. So we made an agreement. And I pretty much always worked on doing things the unfinancially successful way, which is why I'm wearing my daughter's hand-me-down dress while I'm here. So we made this agreement that I would go in on the summertime. And I would make a 30-minute video for every chapter. And that um, there was a group, we got a grant to do live captioning, because closed captioning is so much more expensive than live, live captioning. And I insisted it be captioned before I knew that it was required by law or anybody else did. I just said, we're going to have it captioned. So we had that. And the TV center donated their services, because in the summer they don't have much time. So they donated the services. And the repro, reprographic, no, reproductions of the TV center agreed that they wouldn't charge a fee. And so the tapes would be $3. So once the video iPod came out, I, Apple gave me one. And they said, please do something miraculous with this. So we got the, the videos on the iPod. So we had the first community college course. We actually, we had the first course in the nation that was a full course that iTunes U hosted on their site. But it also happened to be the first community colleges. So lots of firsts. So that's, that's the beginning over a 10-year period. Okay. Open education, let me just ask you, how many of you have heard of open education resources before? OK, so about half to 2 thirds. So what these are are items that are freely available on the web. They may be copyrighted, but they have assigned what's typically called a Creative Commons license, 
which allows you to download, reuse, repurpose, and even sell, depending upon the type of license that you have, as long as you give attribution. Um, so we know that there's basically a lot of garbage out there on the web. So the way we set up the consortium, and then when I stepped down, Judy Baker took over, is that um, she set up this part where, where open ed resources were peer reviewed. So when the publishers were trying to decide about whether to offer Susan and me a contract, uh, each publisher sent our book out to three or four reviewers. Well, we have about 15 reviewers of our textbook for the online version. There are a whole bunch of people who review it for content and so on on there. What I love about it is I'm not teaching from the textbook. You can cut and put pieces together and make modules and get everything all together. You can update immediately. People will send me a suggestion. And if I, if I don't like it, I said, that's a really good idea. You can download my book and make your own book and put that in your version because that's a really good idea for your students. Or I can um, put it into mine, which goes into the master. Very easy to update. In fact, Mark said to me, he says, Barb, when he picked me up at the airport, I don't know how you did this, but I was watching while you were on the plane coming from California, you were still updating your connection site. I said, oh, see, I have a partner. Susan was doing that, not me. <laughs> I couldn't do that. So anyways, you get this feedback loop. All right, so now here's the version of my textbook. My, well, it's not mine anymore because I didn't go, I should have gone back to this. Oops. OK, so you see I didn't mention Maxfield Foundation and WebAssign. So what happened was we had the textbook, and that was the only thing that wasn't in the Hewlett grant. And then there is this really nice, very generous man named Bob Maxfield, who's from Texas. And he went to Rice University, and then went to Stanford, and then founded a company called Rome. He's M. Maxfield Rome. Um, he said he really, wasn't the, he really was the weakest link, which is why they put him M for Rome. But I think it just sounded better than Rawl or something. So Rome became a huge company. He started an educational foundation. Connections is from Rice University. He must be very rich because he's on the board of trustees of Rice University, which I think means you're a big donor. And he's really smart. And so he just called me up and he said, I want to have a meeting with you and Susan. And he's nearby us. So we went over and he, he bought the copyright from our textbook from us so that we would no longer publish it and earn money. He paid us and we gave the copyright. Well, we didn't give. We sold the copyright to Bob. To Bob he donated the copyright to Rice University. So I don't want you to think I'm completely altruistic because the shoes are mine. Only the dress is my daughter's. You know, so um, uh, we did earn money by selling the copyright, but it was at a really good time. She and I had each gotten our last child through college, and it was, it, the book's now so much better. Then came WebAssign. I was at um, AMATIC, American Mathematical Association, for two-year college's annual conference in Boston in 2009, going around to all the booths. And Joel and Mark were there. And I sort of went up sheepishly, because WebAssign works with big publishers, not little unknown people names things. And so I said, hi, you know, I'm, a, I'm an author. Do you think you might work with an open resource book? And I think Joel said, what's that? And I said, let me explain. So I got home. And the one thing I'm pretty good at is I'm pretty good about doing email introductions. So I did an email introduction. I said, Joel and jo or I said, dear Joels, Joel Hollenbeck, da 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 Joel Thierstein, da 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 You guys need to talk, blah, blah, blah. And the rest is history. And, um, and it was, it's been a great partnership since for that. OK, so now on connections, you can download the PDF. By the way, I want you to know that you know, as strongly as I believe in OER, I then, I, in this whole process, went back and got my PhD in online, uh, online learning because I started realizing that I didn't really know how adults learn. And learning on computers is different than when I learned in graduate school where all I had to do was proofs all day long. Very different. So I went back and did this. And then I put my dissertation as an OER on a website so that you don't have to subscribe to the UMI thing and pay $1.75 or whatever, and I get four cents. So on connections, the book is free, and I'm going to show you. It's, a, it's what I call a web 1.0, meaning that you can view it. You can email comments to me, but it's not per se interactive the way other things are. The PDF is always free. You can always download the PDF. You can always print it. If you want a hard copy, you can print it. And I, I think, was it John saying, 
nobody prints them unless your parents are paying the bill or somebody. Well, I have had two people out of about 3,000 who have actually printed out the book because it's 600 plus pages, so for less than 30, and they both printed it at work. So <laughs> the, the community college students don't have the parents who are willing to pay for the printing, but they do it at work and suddenly it's great. So they can do it, and there's some arrangement with Coop giving some money back to Connections for the sustainability, iTunes U, all the free chapters, Web Assign, the students, instead of what's typically where you order a textbook and it comes with a Web Assign access code, my students go online and they pay Web Assign directly. So the book is free, it's $25 for the whole associated thing, and inside Web Assign they actually have the textbook and the links and the videos and, and all of that works together. So, um, but even if they wanted to buy the textbook hard copy, because a lot of students like that, it's still about $53 total for the whole thing. And now, coming out um, this fall is going to be a new version of the textbook with a company called No, which is based out of California, and 20 Million Minds, which is a foundation that former California Senate Majority Leader Dean Flores is um, head of. And this is what's going to have enhanced video. And so as much as I can on a static PDF, I'm going to show you Web 2.0. OK, so here's the um, connection site. So when you go up, the URL is up there. This is just one, one um, where is this? This is frequency right here, this one section. And so you can maneuver back and forth with it. You can see the module. Those are links to email us. You can download the whole PDF, the module, a different collection, just this part. If this module were a lab, then you, you could then download and print out the lab or the homework in both um, Word or PDF format, so you could get it there. What I want to show you is anything in blue here is either a hyperlink or you can scroll over it and the definition pops up. So when we went from the textbook to the, to the connection site, um, by chance, I ended up working with a reading specialist who works with adult, adult um, developmental readers, and she was giving us ways that help with student reading. She said, you know, the calculus, physics, engineering students, if they don't know a word, they look it up. Or if it's in the glossary, they look in the back of the book. The developmental students don't look it up. They're just trying to get through the assignment. And what they see is looking up a word like frequency, that might take another minute to doing their homework, and they're just trying to get through. So you scroll over it, and the definition pops up. Um, you, it's nonlinear reading in that you can jump from part to part to part and go back and forth. And you can navigate. You can also print out just that web page if you want or print out different things. So that's the, that's the connection site. And uh, has anybody ever looked on the connection site for any of their textbooks? No. So they have so many textbooks here. So those of you who are um, interested for your subject, if and they started out from the electrical engineering department, so most of their textbooks are chemistry or engineering. Okay, and this is my last slide. This is the no version now, and it's still in its prototype. This is a PDF from an iPad. So you go like this, and the pages go, right? On the iPad, I can't really do this. I was out at a conference a long time ago. This is what happens when you have the non-science people, non-STEM people in there. And the poor woman, she was trying to get her slides to advance. And she first started clicking at the projector. And then she said, oh, what am I doing? I have to click at the screen. <laughs> so it doesn't work that way. So you can go like this, right? You can press on a word, the word effective, and bubble it. And it will link to a definition. So it doesn't have to be a statistics word. I can highlight it. It comes down. What they have embedded over here is going to be, at the bottom here, these are going to be links to simulations that will be live when you press them, not live in a PDF. You press the simulation, and it does it. So if you're simulating tossing a coin, for example, and counting the number of heads, it will do that. And then oh, up there, you press a button, and it goes to the appropriate con video. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the con videos, but there are a lot in, in math science. And at the top of each chapter, you press the button, and it goes to the 30-minute video. And so we're just starting to talk with them to get that all embedded. And so that's why um, 
Uh, what I have in the web assigned is the link to the PDF, and the new PDF will be out in the fall, and it, that's, that's where we're going. So it, to me, what I look at and say is, one, if I kept the book as a traditional author and I was doing things, I would be earning more money. So I gave that up for future, whatever they call it, the lump sum payment instead of the continued royalties. But what's happened is, the books become so much better. And if we back up 15 years to when we started to write the book, we wrote the book to help with student learning. And it's come back because it's, it's increased student learning. And the exciting thing is that as a professional, I feel that I've gotten more of an education by being able to connect up with WebAssign and get all of this. It's like, oh my gosh, this is how the students are working and they're learning things, connecting with the different OER things. Um, being able to go to Rice University and see what they're doing with all the other stuff. And it's been this great, great partnership. So I was um, really eager to have this next level come up. So I think, is that my last slide? Yes. My students, I guess, could give up, not Mark's. So <laughs> that's the end of what I have. So um, I, oh, the other thing I want to say before I I leave is that this is, so this is my first year working with WebAssign. We started in the summer with a pilot, and then we started in the fall for real. And any time you're on the first year of anything, bugs come up. For example, you know, a typical one was, uh, I, I would say like in 98% of the cases, the bugs that come up are because my students don't read the directions. So they're not really, I put bugs in quotes. For example, it will say, round to four decimal places, and my students will enter a fraction. You know, so things like that. So, but anytime something's come up, um, because this is a new book, it's not like the sixth edition of Stewart or the seventh edition or the books that have been around in WebAssign for quite a while. Every time something happened, I got a response really fast back from WebAssign. And I, I, I just want to thank all the WebAssign folks because <laughs> If it weren't for you, my students would be, wouldn't be learning as well. And it's been just such an enhancement to the student learning. So I, re I really appreciate um, the fact that, you know, that Joel took me in and, and um, when I went to Boston and I said, can I talk to you? And, and Mark too and, and John, I, I mean, I so appreciate it because I feel it's just really helped my students along the way here. So thanks. Okay, so Mark now.